page 61. Ralph's whiskers trembled. That one word spoken by the hamster hinted at evils unknown to Ralph. Here was an animal who was wise in the ways of the world. Well, go on, thought Ralph impatiently. Tell me more. Chum was silent. Finally, Ralph was forced to say, how come that girl brought you here to Happy Acres? It's a long story, said Chum. I'm not in a hurry, said Ralph. Go on. Chum spat the hull of a sunflower seed into the bottom of his cage. I was one of thirteen hamsters, six girls and seven boys, born in the back room of a pet store. Thirteen, Ralph was awed. That's bigger than my litter. What was it like living in a pet store? We had a happy, carefree childhood there in the cage in the back room, Chum continued. There was plenty of food and water and fresh cedar shavings in the bottom of the cage. We slept all day, all 13 of us, in a warm and cozy heap. Then at night, as we grew older, we would play. Oh, the Fun we had those nights in the pet shop. Chum paused, a faraway look in his eyes. Go on, urged Ralph. Where was I? Ah, yes, the frolics we had at night. And then, and then, Chum's voice shook with emotion. Ralph waited quietly until the hamster was able to continue. One day I was sound asleep in the corner of the cage. By then we had grown a lot and I was on the bottom of the heap, but I didn't feel squashed. I felt safe and cozy there beneath my brothers and sisters. When suddenly Chum stopped unable to go on. Don't stop now, pleaded Ralph. What happened? A great human hand, a hand that smelled of dog. Ralph shuddered, reached in and picked up several of my brothers and sisters. Let me tell you, that woke us all up in a hurry. We were terrified. We scrambled around, trying to hide behind our mother, under the wheel, in some cedar shavings, any place. I was slower than the rest, because, you see, I was cramped from being slept on by my brothers and sisters, and so the hand, that terribly doggy hand, got me. It didn't matter. That hand got all us youngsters and turned us upside down in a most undignified fashion. And then we were put into two cages, boys in one and girls in another. What for, asked Ralph. Don't rush me, said Chum, picking up a sunflower seed in his paws and cracking it with his teeth. When he had eaten the kernels, he continued, let me tell you, it was a terrible shock. Shortly after, the doggy hand picked up our cage and loaded it into what is called a station wagon. I know, Ralph was eager to show off his knowledge. I used to see them in the parking lot outside the hotel. They were always full of children and luggage and sometimes a dog or two. Chum ignored the interruption. We soon found ours was not the only cage to go into the station wagon. Our sisters were loaded in beside us, along with a box of turtles, 
a cage of rather downhearted canaries, and two large cages, one containing puppies and the other some very silly kittens. Oh, yes, and a cage of white mice. White mice, said Ralph scornfully, and anybody, not just owls, could see white mice in the dark.